Здравейте, уважаеми зрители! Вие сте отново с Немниците на Уфолога и с мен Стамен Стаменов и естествено заедно с Българска национална телевизия СКАТ, без която нямаше да имаме такива преки и хубави срещи с вас. Първо искам да благодаря най-сърдечно на всички зрители, които отново отново изпратихте писма до мен. Това е едно писмо от от Зоя Димитриева Портарска. Мисля, че е от град Благоев. Град, да, точно така. Не съм отворил още писмото. Нито едно писмо не е отворено. Благодаря на господин Тихомир Петров от село Рубци, област Видин. Благодаря на Стевка Кънчева Иванова от град Казанлък. И най-вече искам да благодаря на господин Борис Добряков. Трябва да видя от къде е, няма значение. Но този човек ми направи изключително впечатление. Да, град Свиленград. Този човек се е загрижил за мен и това, което ми написахте, уважаеми господин Добряков, е абсолютно верно. Вашата изключително ценна книга ще я покажа на уважаемите зрители, защото тя е много полезна. Успях да я прегледам така тук е десетина минути преди предаването. И определено казано, уважаеми зрители, потърсете я тази книга. Тук има изключително ценни полезни завети, плюс рецепти и какво ли не е още. Аз ще се възползвам от препоръката на господин Добряков. И още един път, господин Добряков, много ви благодаря, че уважихте моята персона от гледна точка на здравето. И защото, наистина, не съм много добре с здравето. И така, Уважаеми зрители, скъпи приятели, искам да ви кажа, че идеята за университетът на бъдещето не вита или по-точно тя не съществува като информационно поле тук само в България. Оказва се, че като информационно поле тя е спусната за цялата планета Земя. Аз бях изключително очуден, когато прегледах видеоматериала с Алекс Колиер. Алекс Колиер преди две години беше покален от Кери Касиди. Госпожа Кери Касиди е, може да се каже, основателка на проект Камелот в Съединените Американски щати. Този проект набра изключително висока скорост, особено в края на миналия век, началото на този, направи няколко конференции по света, обедени изключително ценни хора, които са са причастни на темата по темата извънземни цивилизации и неидентифицирани летящи обекти, спокойно може да се каже, че този проект в момента е един от ведущите в света. Защото? Защото към него се присъединиха много ценни хора. Един от тези ценни и вещи хора, това е господин Алекс Колиер. Две думи за него преди да пуснем изключително интересният материал. Алекс Колиер е роден 1956 година в Калифорния, Съединени Американски щати. Точно къде не знаем, но ще разберем. Защото този човек смятаме определено категорично. Ви заявявам, че аз съм си поставил за цял да го покана в България. Алекс Колиер е един изключително природно интелигентен, изключително сензитивен и може би поради това, че има изключително висок ранг на духовност, той е избран от представителите на андромедианската цивилизация да бъде техен говорител тук на планетата Земя. Говорител е силно казано, но чрез него те предадоха най-важната информация до сега, която аз съм получавал от контактьори. Ето, вижте, това е и темата на предаването. Университетът на бъдещето по проект Камелот или по-точно по това, което господин Колиер говори. Защото защото препоръката, която дават андромедианците, е едно към едно, представете си, с това, което ние с вас сме говорили до сега. Андромедианците дори подчертават с града, че е генерално необходимо човечеството да се прости с досегашното си, с досегашните си познания, с досегашния си начин на себеобразоване. Това, за което ние с вас постоянно говорим тук. Оказва се, че андромедианците са много повече загрижени за нашия мироглед, за нашето научно познание и въобще за това как ние възприемаме Вселената, как ние възприемаме собствената си планета и нас, себе си, самите нас, защото се оказва, че ние сме в генерална заблуд. Сега, 
когато проследите какво говори Алекс Колиер, ще разберете с каква болка този човек споделя проблемите на нас, земните хора. Защото ние отстоим, както, както и явно вече е, пролича, на хиляди, не на милиони светлинни години от истините, от космическите закони, управляващи този всемир и тази планета. И като такива ние не само, че не се приближаваме или по-точно не сме тръгнали да се оправим, ние дори и не забелязваме колко сме, колко сме жалки и колко сме грешни спрямо себе си, спрямо природата, спрямо отеца сътворител на всичко. Работата е много сериозна. Проблемите ни са огромни. И понеже ние искаме в България да направим този университет, проследете много внимателно, пак повтарям господин Колиер, какво предава. А това са думите на антромедианците. Земно човечество събуди се. Земно човечество намери истинското познание. Ние сме готови да помогнем, да ви помогнем, скъпи хора, брати и сестри от планетата Земя, защото нещастието ни е голямо. Те подчертават категорично, че манипулацията, която се извършва от глобалният световен налит с човечеството, е жестока. Тя ни е довела до такова дебилско състояние, че ние утре, дори утре, ако ни се падне възможност, да дойдат въпросните. И тогава ще ви стане ясно, защо тези така и не идват. Защо тези така не кацат пред Белия дом, да влезат вътре да си подадат ръка или пък пред която и да е административна сграда, на което и да е световно правителство. Защото сме малоумници. Защото сме страшно агресивни. Защото когато се появи космически кораб от порядъка на извънземните цивилизации, независимо която и да е тя, ние първо стреляме. Ние първо показваме дивашкия си вид. И в този дивашки вид, можете ли да си представите, с този дивашки вид ние искаме да влизаме в космоса. Затова ни изгониха от Луната. Затова няма да, да, ни бъде, да ни бъде разрешено да правим програмите си на Марс. И това са програмите на световния елит, не на човечеството. Ние не трябва да се бъркаме с тях. Защото много точно ще видите сега след малко за какво ни предупреждават андромедианците. Андромедианците ни предупреждават, скъпи приятели, че ние имаме невероятен шанс и този шанс стои е така тук, пред очите ни и между очите ни, но не го виждам. За това, защото първо ни липсва решителност, второ, липсва ни най-важното, прободеността. Ние вървим като слепци, ние сме си на право спящи същества. И другото, жестоката манипулация, жестокото зомбиране, която, които се извършват от глобалния рит спрямо нас. Защото онези умират от чубе да не ни изтърват, защото няма какво да ядат, защото техните началници, рептилиите се хранат с нас, хранат се на енергийно ниво, хранат се на телесно ниво. Храним ги с всичко, каквото имаме. И другото, което е. Те страшно ни завиждат, скъпи приятели. Защото те нямат тия способности, с които ние сме надарени. Дори си признават че ние сме уникален вид. И тук Алекс Колиер го подчертава, че човечеството е уникален вид в Вселената. И за това, че ние сме яхнати, поробени и съсипани, съсипани хилядолетия наред, може би 10, 20 или 30 хиляди години, планетата вече е по-дробство, но е дошъл момента, когато тези трябва да бъдат изритани от тук. И най-опасното в момента, което Алекс Колиер го засяга, е обращението на андромедианците специално към американците. Алекс Колиер потвърждава или по-точно подчертава за енти пореден път колко са затъпяли американците. И аз бях там. Там основната маса е изключително тъпа. Изключително тъпа. Само дето не блее. Още не е пробляла. Не искам да обиждам никого. Това не са... Ние тези неща не ги коментираме да се засягаме или да се обиждаме. Ние ги коментираме с дълбока загриженост за нашето утре. Защото не може най-могъщата страна в света, която държи най-колосални средства за масово изтребление, както на човечество, така и на природа, не може тази държава да съсипва целия свят повече. Защото точно тя до такава степен е внушила на своите елитни граждани, че те са едва ли не богове, че онези в никакъв случай не могат да се поправят. Дори и да слезнат онези ангелски същества от Галактическата федерация на светлината, дори и тогава те ще открият огън по тях. Защото така са възпитавани. Защото 
Пример, най-хубав пример е България. Погледнете, преди ратувахме да видим американците, преди ратувахме да ги посрещнем тука, да... Така да се каже, ние мислехме, че те наистина са демократични, че са високо развити и така натам. Нищо подобно. Нищо подобно. Американците са един дегенерат. Казват се туморен израстък на планетата Земя. Но това не се отнася, това не се отнася за обикновения народ за обикновеното население на тази държава. Отнася се за този елит, който ги е яхнал като хиладоглав, октопот и им измуква жизнените сили. Същото се прави с всяка една страна на този свят. България беше съсипана за по-малко от 10 години от тази свирепа империя, която след Втората световна мина съсипа над 50 държави по същия сценарий, по който ни съсипа и нас. Ето в този контекст, тук няма политика, тук няма политика, дайте да се разберем, ако някой бърка нещата или ще ме сложи в една поредна колода с тези, които коментират такива проблеми. Това е глобален проблем за човечеството. Това е глобален проблем за нас, днешните поколения, за утрешните поколения. И ако ние днес не се опомним и не се вземем в ръце да се обединим, така че да им противостоим, защото само нашата духовна енергия на мощ им стига. Умират от чубе, умират от страх въпросните рептилии. Началниците на глобалният елит са точно тези змейове с опашките, които миткат насам на там по планетата Земя и които фактически дърпат конците на погрешното ни развитие. То вече не е погрешно, то е пагубно. До сега беше погрешно. И за това аз с такава болка и загриженост говоря и един ден наистина ние ще ритнем канчето на тази дебилясваща ни учебно-образователна програма. Те искат да ни съсипат първо на първо, точно както се съсипа един телевизор. Бръкнете в чипа на телевизора, съсипете му централния процесор и от това нищо не става. Точно така и с човека. Бръкнете му вътре, какво казваше царя. Българския народ е повреден в чипа, да, той има право. Защото ние наистина сме повредени и не можем да различаваме белото от черното както трябва. Ние наистина сме дълбоко заблудени, говоря за по-голямата част от българското население. И така, 18.35. Сега ще помала оператора да пуснем видеоматериала, а след това ще имам още 10 на минути това е материалът е 45 минути, да си поговорим с вас. И така моля видео. We're very honored to have Alex Collier join us. This is pretty much unprecedented. He does not speak, as you may know, often or even has in quite some time. So I just wanted to say that I got a message over a year ago that the Andromedans wished to speak and that they wished Alex Collier to come to Camelot and that we could provide a, a service or a platform for that. So we've been working to have that happen. It's taken quite some time. We're really happy that, that this can happen today. And we, we just want to say thank you very much for making this possible to the, the hidden beings here and around us at this time. So, Alex, I'm actually not going to give you a big introduction beyond that today. Um, I'm going to let you speak for yourself. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Collier. Can you all hear? All right, great. Um, I want to thank all the speakers. I was uh, at home yesterday watching the streaming, and uh, God, there were just, you know, George Green and uh, just all of the speakers, uh, just fantastic, and they give so much. And I, I know that all of you here give so much, and you try in your own way to, you know, share the light. I mean, there's two ways to be the light, and that one is to be the candle, and the other is the mirror that reflects the candle. And we live in an extraordinary time on Earth. I mean, absolutely extraordinary. In the next several years, you're all going to think you're living in a science fiction movie. And you are living in a science fiction movie, except it isn't a movie, it's reality. Um, if you want information on me, I think there's some on the web both pro and con. And uh, 
you know, I, I'm just going to get right into it. Um, I'm going to give you some updates, and then we're going to talk about some things that I was specifically asked to speak to you about from Morinae. Um, Einstein said, the, you cannot solve the problems of the world with the same thinking that created them. And that is no, uh, no more prevalent and relevant, relevant than it is today. Um, we have enormous problems, or challenges, I should say challenges, that uh, take enormous amount of brainstorming and solutions. The difficulty in trying to solve some of the issues that we have is the fact that we do not have all the data. And the two gentlemen that were up here prior to, you know, alluded to that. Uh, so did Robert Dean, uh, Mr. Green, uh, Bill and Kerry have, uh, so many of the speakers, uh, you know, as we keep trying to go forth and gather all the information uh, to try to solve this out. I, like many of the other speakers and each of you, have a small piece of the puzzle. Now, we're going we're to talk about some of that today. Um, I know that there's an awful lot of talk about disclosure. I know that in the exopolitics community, there's a great deal of talk about disclosure. I personally don't believe the United States government's ever going to admit it. It'll probably come from another country, India or China, first. Or the extraterrestrials themselves are going to show themselves and just say, hey, the charade's gone on long enough, which is, probably, which is probably the highest probability at this point. And we will talk about some of that uh, tonight, today. Um, I had honed my presentation for an hour because that's what I thought I had. Um, so uh, in talking about solving the problems, at the very top of our power structure, the planet Earth lives in a pyramidal power structure. Extraterrestrial civilizations no longer use that power structure, the pyramidal power structure. They have been using a holographic ever since the end of the Orion Wars, okay? in, in a, which would be in our linear time about 360,000 years ago. Since then, most of the civilized benevolent civilizations, including some of the rogue regressive groups, and they are a minority, have been using a holographic social structure, and we're going to talk about that today, okay? Um, we're also going to talk about creating a new domain of knowing, a space in which we can create an opportunity for Earth to be mentored, because we, we need some help here. We are a little bit in over our heads, okay? So, it takes me a little while to warm up here. I, <laughs> I'm a little rusty. Um, as of the last several days, much of the Cassini project has been classified. The reason for that is because of all the mothership activity that has now been filmed and documented in the Saturian system around Saturn. Um, we also have a, a million and a half miles off of the South Pole, a 20-mile craft that has sat in a stationary. Um, NASA and other organizations, telescopes have been monitoring it for eight months. They watched its trajectory to us. It is now stationary, and there are craft going in and out of this 20-mile structure. I don't know any more about it than that. I also want you to know that there is a very large planetary structure coming in, 18 degrees right ascension of Neptune's orbit. It'll, it should be visible sometime in the next year. There is an awful lot going on, and of course, you're all paying the bills, and no one's being told anything about it. Now, it goes far deeper than spooking the herd. That is really not the intention here at all. Okay, the intention here and what's really been going on is, is simply this. Bob Dean made uh, a reference yesterday to almost feeling sorry for the government about the situation that they're in. Um, I, I would have to concur with him on that, in the fact that 
uh, the government made some treaties, uh, cut some deals for technology uh, in exchange for experimentation and observation, and they were tricked. They really did not know what they were getting themselves into. And now the hand has been dealt. Uh, there are many people within the UFO community that say that all the extraterrestrials are benevolent. Ladies and gentlemen, it is in my own personal opinion and based on the knowledge that I have that that is completely irresponsible to say. We live in a duality. <clears throat> because if it was all love and light, we would not be going down this road to global fascism and the powers that be wanting to eliminate two-thirds of the world's population. That is not love and light. Okay? So, we have, we have a lot of things to cover, um, and a lot of things are going to be occurring. The economic situation is what it is. Uh, Mr. Green gave a fantastic presentation yesterday. There is absolutely nothing that I disagree with him about. Um, he made a reference to buying gold and silver. I think that's a really good idea. However, you cannot eat gold and silver. It is imperative that you start storing food, and I will tell you simply why. If they do crash the dollar, which they are going to do, in order to create a global currency and a global government, um, you won't be able to buy food. He made reference to the currency being devalued six to one in the next several months. Gasoline will go to eighteen twenty dollars a gallon. Truckers will not be able to deliver product. What you have is what you'll have. Okay? It is imperative to, if you can, start forming within your community, community gardens, figuring it out. You need to start talking about this. I know most people are simply not open to it. Just do the best you can. I mean, we're all, we're all fighting the fight. Now, America is on the front line of this. And the reason is simple. America created a new domain of knowing. America was created to get rid of the aristocracy of the old world, to create something new, to create individual liberties, to create personal freedoms. That was never known in the world before. And we have that. And because of our apathy, we have lost virtually all of those. And it is no one else's fault. It is our own fault. We have known since the 60s that the CIA has been trafficking narcotics. We know this. We have known that the CIA has been assassinating and overthrowing governments. We have known that there's been a cover-up of what there is on the moon and inside our solar system. We know this. We know that there is extraterrestrial life. We know this. That is no longer the discussion. We know that the government has become corrupt. Okay? These, the people, the personages that rule the planet are not us. They are not human beings. And I will say this with my very last breath. They are not us. Okay? <clears throat> Now, what happened was that they took over because they think holographically. It was very easy to get around the pyramidal, corp uh, the pyramidal power structure on Earth because it's completely obsolete everywhere else out there. So if you come in using a holograph, using holographic technology, not technology, but thinking, what you do is you create your structure everywhere so no matter what happens, whether one group gets taken out, another group takes out, is gone, the other components are still there to rise up and still manage and control. Because each of these components have a picture of the whole. And they have all the technology and everything they need to continue to control and dominate and brainwash. Okay? We're over our heads here. But we're not alone. Now, what happened was they took over. It was very easy to take over the governments. You dangle technology. You dangle knowledge. You dangle ancient history. And you give them this technology in secret. Okay? You have it. We're going to give it to you. 
the United States of America made this mistake. So, uh, Bob Dean, again, Mr. Dean made a reference yesterday to the missing trillions of dollars from the Federal Reserve. Okay, I have been told that it's $24 trillion is what they carry on their books. And uh, virtually most of that has gone into the secret space program and the colonization of our solar system. You can choose to believe that or not. It doesn't matter, and it doesn't change the reality of it. Okay? So what happened was the pirates took over the ship. Okay? The governments, realizing that they had all this technology and that they were a thousand years more advanced than we were, instead of telling everyone, hey, we have a problem here, and standing tall and doing the right thing, they joined the pirates. We are literally only now, as passengers on the ship, finding out and realizing that we've been hijacked. Okay? That's the movement. And many people are going to have a very difficult time when they realize that reality is not at all what they think it is or what they thought it was. Even those of us who have been exposed to this for many, many years have oh shit moments. I, it's impossible not to. You know? Yes, our politicians sold out. Um, it was easy to corrupt them. We, we, have, we have an enormous mess. They're stuck in the middle as well. Over the next year, year and a half, there's going to be so many changes. America is the focal point here uh, of this, and the reason for that is because Americans, despite our educational system, are still very smart. We are very able to think out of the box. We are excellent problem solvers, and we are armed to the teeth. They constantly will have to be looking over their shoulder unless they take us out. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the goal. They cannot have a new world go go they cannot have a world government without taking out the US. And I mean taking it to its knees. Now this is not the portion, this is not where the whole presentation is going, but it's important to give you this background because the world used to look to us for the ideals of freedom. Immigrants all over the world have come to America. My grandparents were immigrants to this country because they believed in individual liberties. They believed in freedom. They believed in the principles that were in the Constitution the Declaration of Independence and the Bill of Rights. And ladies and gentlemen, that is who we are. We are not the crap that they show you on television. Gentlemen, you are not. <clears throat> gentlemen, you are not the weak-kneed sissy morons they try to portray us on television either. You are strong, you are family-oriented, you have faith, and you are warriors, and you're going to need to take a stand and defend your country and your family. Make no mistake about it. The two gentlemen that were here talking about the super soldiers, yeah, they're here. They're definitely here. They're hybrids. They're here. Okay? And there's more that's been going on. Um, I was hoping that one of them would talk about what happened in Dulce, New Mexico. Um, but they did not. And I don't necessarily want to go there either because, oh, God, it's sick. It's sick. Okay? <clears throat> no, I, I, I'm, I'm, there, there's other things to cover. But um, I, I bring it up because many people in, that have the knowledge, that have been in black ops, special ops, that have been involved in the ET component know about that small rogue group. And they're not gone yet. Some of them are still here. All right? And they still create and wreak havoc. Um, I also want to tell you, and I have been asked to share this with you, about the vaccine, the new swine flu vaccine. Morinay has told me to tell you, or everyone,
that this vaccine will permanently damage your DNA. So whatever else comes out of that, it will permanently damage your DNA. Now, many of us in the community and in the world as a whole, we can't even agree on what the problem is. And because of that, we will never even agree on a solution. So it's imperative that open dialogue uh, continue to occur. And I know that for those of uh, those who have been in the exopolitics, that's what I'm basically calling the UFO community, exopolitics now, um, you've had a remarkable amount of patience and your biggest tests are coming. Because as more and more of this information comes out, more and more people are gonna to want to ask you who they thought were crazy, what the hell's going on? They're gonna to wanna to know. And you're gonna to have to try, in a very calm manner, explain it to them. Even though you yourselves are gonna have all the butterflies, you're gonna be wondering, how the hell am I gonna even deal with this? because you have some background information. Now, this ET component is really about us. It is our destiny to travel the stars. It is our destiny to continue to move out and colonize space, especially our own solar system. It is not our destiny to be killed by vaccines and war. You will have to make those choices. My choices are already made. Okay? My decisions are clear. I am the father of five children. There is no way I'm going to back down and I'm going to sell them into slavery. Never going to happen. Okay? You need to make your own choices. Okay. I once asked Phaseus, one of the Andromedans, who has since crossed over, what was to become of us? Some of this may be a, a review for some of you. What was to become of us? Who, what was going to happen to our race, to our civilization? And he just, he just looked at me and he said, this is how we see you. Responsible freedom of self-determination becoming truly self-confident and free, to unconditionally be responsible for oneself without being coerced to accept some higher authority. In our galaxy, the more advanced the civilizations have become in the center of the galaxy, the riffraff had to start moving out to the outskirts of the galaxy. The riffraff. It's just like Star Wars. Okay? We are in the boonies. And that's why we have some riffraff here. We're not the only uh, planetary race that is having problems with the riffraff. Okay? But what's unique about us is that genetically we are considered to the Andromedan race genetic royalty. And I have been saying this since day one. We are extremely unique. And it's because of that uniqueness we have enormous strength. We have enormous capacity for emotions. We have enormous intent and drive to not only to survive, but to create. What we lack is faith in ourselves. At the end of World War II, well, I mean, let me put it another way. The Nazis didn't lose the war, okay? Germany lost the war, but the Nazis were brought here and to Russia, okay? Now, the mind technology, the mind control, the space technology, the reverse engineering, the technology that they had been given prior to the war by a small group of extraterrestrials from the star system of Aldebaran was brought here 
and honed and polished and combined with other technology that the Zeta twos, the Dows, uh, what many folks know as the Grays, all those began to complement each other. Remarkable technology. Technology we absolutely need here. I mean, the combustion engine has been obsolete for 70 years. I understand that India also is now going to experiment on wireless electricity. Hell, Tesla did that in 1902 in Colorado Springs. We know it works. Okay, but those that were funding his experiment asked him, where's the meter? And he said, well, there is none. It's free. They shut it down. Okay? The question is, well, we'll get to that. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm jumping around here. The question, the reality is, ladies and gentlemen, what kind of country do you want to live in? What kind of world do you want to live in? Clearly what we're doing now doesn't work. It has run its course. We have a government that has a lot of problems. We have corruption within it, not all of it, but we clearly have corruption within it. They have sold out and have been totally compromised. They themselves don't know what to do. And, if, if, and their only solution is to turn the power of the military and the power of the pharmaceutical company against the American people. That's their solution. That is not okay. That's not okay. It's time for um, the UFO, the Exopolitics Committee, to start creating another domain of knowing. And that domain of knowing is two things. What does a holographic social structure look like? How can we live with a holographic social structure mirrored after some of the principles that our founding fathers laid, but it wasn't perfect. What could we do now? And we're not just talking about the United States. This has to be a global thing. This has to be a global movement. What does that look like? So we need to create and start groups, dialogues, talking about living in a holographic structure where all the information that is available Black op, secret, top secret, above top secret, is available to everyone. But we could just start with the information that we do have. The rest of it will come. It's going to collapse on itself because it's no good. It cannot stand on its own. And the minute we turn our focus away from them and they can't feed off our fear, it will collapse in a heartbeat because where focus goes, energy flows. Okay? As long as they keep you looking at it, they are using the energy of your soul, of your spirit, to feed this monstrosity. It's time to just ignore them. Turn your focus away, and let's create what we really, really want. But we have to decide what that is. Along with that, I have been asked to start asking people to talk to people, you're the first to hear this, about what would it look like for you, for Earth, and we'll start with the exopolitics uh, community, what would it look like for you to be mentored by several benevolent extraterrestrial races? What would that look like? How can we, what would we need to do to establish not only that communication, but at the same time have us feel safe with checks and balances so that they can walk their talk and we have to walk our talk. Open mentorship is our destiny. It's going to happen anyway, but we cannot wait for the government to turn itself around. It can't because it's not in control. All right? It is not in control. So we have to turn our focus away from all that drama and figure out another way. Uh, what I want to do now is read to you um, what I was given way back when regarding creating a domain of knowing. This also came for Phaseus. Create another domain of knowing, communicating and being. In other words, the domain of calling forth or generating your intent needs to be more distinct. 
Your physics, as you call it, is a good example of this calling forth. There have been men on your planet who have called forth new domains of thinking that never existed before here. They invented it. They didn't fantasize it. They didn't pretend. They literally created this new context from what you now call physics. Your humanity is strong with this kind of example. No being, however, makes the distinction that this is what they are. I would like to give you an example. Your concept of human rights isn't so long ago, wasn't so long ago that no such thing existed on your planet. It just simply didn't exist. You, you Terrans did not have any rights. Only the kings and the priests had their rights. But most of you Terrans do not have any rights. So you and other Terrans created human rights from nothing. You created the domain that created not only the rights to call come forth, you created the language, and then you communicated it. And this communication that you gave had power because it was full of intent. It has the power not only to, re to represent and to invoke, but it also to literally bring it into being. This is what your races need to do in order to clearly know yourselves. Now, in talking about that, let's talk about religions for a moment. The pyramidal structure of our governments primarily have come out of ancient Rome. And Rome was essentially controlled by 13 families. Okay? Those 13 families still exist today. Um, many of the world's religions, though they, they've had a tremendous amount of value and have brought an enormous amount of comfort to many people in our history and in our present day. They focus on shame, guilt, sin, and control. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the trap. Okay? They don't focus on self-responsibility. They don't focus on life or respect. They, in fact, create more division than we have ever known. Now, did they start out that way? With the exception of the Roman Catholic Church? I'm just going to be blunt about it. Uh, no. But the powers that be are masters of infiltrating movements. And what they do, and I'll give you the best example I can give you, is that of a charitable foundation. A foundation is created using the power of the people and the monies, the resources of the people, to do something that is of a benefit to humanity. As it's moving and it begins to gain power, and it starts to spread and shift consciousness, awareness, the powers that be will walk in and say, hey, we really believe in what you're doing. And we're going to give you a $25 million grant to help you continue to do your work. But we want to put one of our members on the board just to make sure that the money is spent wisely. And then they do it again. And now you have a second board member. And now you have a third board member. And before you know it, that movement, that foundation, instead of going up and creating more consciousness, more awareness, is now heading the other way. Okay? And now they also control the wealth of that foundation. Okay? We have been thinking in a pyramidal structure and a third density structure. They're in fourth density in holographic we have to think the same way. And we have to be talking about how is it that we got ourselves into this. 
Now, this isn't a question of, well, it's essential that we put blame to the side for the moment. There's plenty of that, and there will be plenty of that. What we need is the knowledge. We need to know how these structures work so that we can create something different, something in total opposition to it. Because I can't imagine everybody's happy with the way things are. Okay? And this isn't just about the United States. This is about the global population. Because the extraterrestrial races don't see us as separate countries. They see us as one race. Okay? And we're all, we're all between a rock and a hard place, pretty much, okay? at the moment. Um, Taking personal responsibility is huge, but it really is the first and the biggest step to achieving full consciousness, okay? Um, I'm going to read you a quote that I found. It was, it's from a gentleman named Little Hawk. He's a Native American Indian with the Mohawk tribe. Take credit for your mistakes, not what you do good, because you're supposed to be doing good anyway. Okay? We've all made mistakes. We've all screwed up. Okay? But that's part of the learning process. Okay? If, if you had all knowledge and you were all seeing, you wouldn't need to be here. Okay? So, collectively and individually, we need to start looking at the world and saying, what has my contribution been? Now, I'm not talking about going out and trying to save the world. It's not about that at all, okay? It's really about each one of us individually. It's about being the light. It's, it's about not feeling shame for our mistakes. It's about absolutely unlearning that you are not a sinner. That is such crap that I want to vomit every time I hear that. Okay, you are not a sinner. You are a spiritual being in a physical body. Or as George Green said, rent a wreck. I, I like that. That was really cute. Okay? <clears throat> now, <clears throat> look at the structure that is overlaying us. Governments of control and dominance. A monetary system that controls everything corporations and banks that own the debt of every nation, which means literally they're in control because they have the debt. Okay? We have medical and pharmaceutical companies who have had cures for cancer and other diseases, okay, that now want to damage your DNA with untested vaccinations. Imagine how afraid they are of you. Can you just for a moment imagine how afraid of you they are. And now you've got to ask yourself the question, why are they afraid of you? Okay. Because we are awesome, awesome creator gods. We have the ability to create reality, to bring it forth, to call it forth. And they have done everything they can to continue to make sure that we believe we're powerless. This is why so many extraterrestrial races are coming here now. Okay? Because they know different. On some level, ladies and gentlemen, we consciously have called forth this drama. This is really about us. Okay? We have called this forth. Okay? This is really about us. It's not about them. And we need to step into our power here. We need to fully understand it's time for us to step into our power as a planetary race and not see the borders anymore. Now, I would not be that opposed to a global government if it was set up with a constitution like the U.S. Constitution and an absolute Bill of Rights. But even then, that's not a guarantee because if people don't defend those rights, if people don't defend their liberties, 
What good is it? We've just experienced that. Okay? We've just experienced that. And in 1913, when the Federal Reserve took over, that's when the train started going the other way. And here we are. A hundred trillion dollars in debt. An absolutely ridiculous number. Okay? It's probably higher. Who knows? Okay? Now, in creating our holographic model of a civilization or a uh, social structure, do we want to have a monetary system? Do we actually need a monetary system? Because we're the only ones that I'm aware of in our galaxy that still use a monetary system. Okay? In fact, many, many years ago, I had been asked by Moran Avisayas to put together a short presentation on money. They already knew um, about it, but I did the best that I could. And when it was over, Viseas just looked at me and he goes, I don't understand. And I said, well, what do you not understand? He says, I don't understand why you have to pay to live on a planet you were born on. <laughs> okay? And ladies and gentlemen, that has haunted me ever since. And that little, that just that one little thing takes you completely out of the box. Okay? For the first time, you begin to think, well, geez, what would it look like not to have a currency? You know? Advanced civilizations, all their needs are taken care of. All of their standard day-to-day -day life needs are met by the government. No strings attached. And then you do donate your time and your expertise and your skills to do something you want that benefits the whole. Okay? Now, I'm not talking about communism either. It's something bigger than that. Okay? But, but we need some help in defining what that is. Now, we have a lot of really brilliant, intelligent people here, here and in the world. And I know other people around the world have been talking about similar things, creating a different society and maybe even a holographic society, and what that looks like, a holographic power structure. So no matter what happens, it will totally always stand on its own. The Founding Fathers tried to do something like this when they created all the states as equal, in control, and separate from the government. That was pretty much their intent, whether they realized it or not. I also want you to know that we have a lot of help. We are getting a lot of help from the spiritual side, as well as the dimensional side. And I'm not talking about just dimensional beings. I am talking about also extraterrestrials. I'll give you an example of what I'm talking about. The vision at Valley Forge of George Washington. I know that a lot of people on the net, if you've not researched it, I suggest that you do. Some say it's a hoax. It's not a hoax. I also want you to know that Thomas Jefferson, in his diaries, was out walking at his estate in Monticello, was trying to figure out the verbiage, the language, in regards to the Declaration of Independence, when he was met by a hooded man who he never really clearly saw, who gave him the conversation and the pieces that he needed to finish the Declaration of Independence. I also want you to know that in the Constitutional Hall, when everybody was bantering and going back and forth, and it looked like no one was going to sign the Declaration of Independence, up on the top railing of, of, of the hall, a man appeared out of nowhere and for 20 minutes gave an oration, an oration about how important this was, not only to the United States and to the moment, but to the entire world as a whole. And as soon as, everyone was, as soon as he was done, everybody rushed to the table and signed the Declaration of Independence. Benjamin Franklin and the Sergeant at Arms went upstairs to try to talk to this man because they wanted to know who he was. There were armed guards at every single door. The armed guards swore no one went in, no one went out. So there is divine providence here, ladies and gentlemen. It is not a mistake that you live in this country. It is not a mistake that you are who you are. Enough is enough. It is time we step into our power. And very simple steps will do this. First, you have to make a decision. And the decision is no more bullshit. OK? No more bullshit. OK? America 
is the reason it is because we allowed it to happen by our apathy. Okay? We have elections. We know we're voting for the lesser of two evils. We know that, but we do it anyway. Okay? I also want you to know that the President of the United States is not in charge of our government. Okay? He's just not. I want you to know that there are 47 layers of top secret clearances above the President of the United States. 47 layers. You want to know your secret government? That's your secret government. He can't even get a clearance. He doesn't even know who to talk to to get a clearance to find out about this stuff. Okay? So, it is important that we turn our focus a little bit and we start creating something different. This is what the founders did. This is what many people have done throughout the world. Okay, the Renaissance was something exactly like this. Okay, they threw off Rome and they tried to do something different. Rome, uh, the, the church, the government of Rome. They threw it off and they tried to create something different. And it went for a while. Okay, mentoring. The conversation in the exopolitics community in my personal opinion, is no longer do UFOs exist. It's completely irrelevant, okay? We already know they do. Um, where do they come from? That has some validity. Is it metal? That doesn't have any validity. It doesn't matter, okay? Um, what matters is why are they here? And what can we do to learn from this experience? Now, the reason that most, that many of the extraterrestrial groups benevolent are not talking to the government is because they know they're compromised. I will tell you that there is, there has begun some mentoring off-world of our military. Off-world. It has begun, but that is such a small piece. What really needs to happen is we need to create a new domain of knowing, and we need to call this information directly to ourselves. No more middleman. No more middlemen. Okay? They can't be trusted. We have to do it ourselves. Now, how do we go about that? I don't have all those pieces. The idea was to share it and plant the seed inside of all of you to, th to start thinking about what does mentoring look like? What would it imagine, how would you imagine extraterrestrials coming down and saying, okay, folks. Че когато прегледах този видеоматериал, аз изтръпнах и още нещо. Гледах го втори, трети, четвърти, пети път. И стигам пак до същото, до същата отправна точка, от която тръгнахме още в началото на това предаване. Аз сега няма да пусна зрителите, защото нямам време, но трябва да ви е ясно най-важното, уважаеми зрители. Виждате, че проблематиката по цял свят е една и съща. И че причинителите на нашата трагедия са едни и същи. И че тези господари и величия стоят на едно и също място. И че те първо съсипват онази държава отвъд океана, т.е. народа на тази държава. И след това целият свят. В този контекст... Алекс Колиер непрекъснато апелира да се създаде нова сфера на познанието. Защо? Защото коалиционният отряд, наблюдатели, в който влизат и същите тези андромедианци, отдавна са извадили километрова хавлия и ни съжаляват живи. Живи са ни оплакали, приятели. Защото ние плуваме в такава матилка, с такава помия, с такива помийни плакнат душите. И за това аз ви казвам, докато тупка моето сърце, тука и сега, 
Аз ще направя главата си на бомба, ръцете си на чукове, кожата си на тъпан и ще излеза в борба с стихията. Ние трябва да литнем час по-скоро канчето на тая изумително изродска образователна система. Нищо истинско няма там. Дори 2 не е 4. Ние трябва да се обърнем към нашите учители, защото познанието е дадено. И трябва наистина да поставим колкото се може по-бързо нова платформа на образованието, защото ни мерата къла. И утре, когато се изниже купончето на това нещастно тяло и се обърнем какво сме преживели и виждаме една и съща трагедия. Поколения след поколения, поколения след поколения. Една и съща трагедия. Дори BGs да биха могли да се възпроизведат на ново, няма да могат да възпеят трагедията на човечеството. Вижте какво, приятели. Дайте всеки да бие камбаната, колкото и да е ръждясала тя. Камбаната на заспалата човешка съвест. Както виждате, и американците, и европейците, и азиаците, и всичките на тази планета стоим на едно и също равнище спрямо глобалната мафия. Те искат да ни ликвидират и физически, защото смятат, че вече са ни ликвидирали духом. Но тук са сбъркали, генерално са сбъркали, защото нашата сила, и Алис Колер го каза, нашата сила е силата на духа, особено на българите. Онази империя от Ватокеяна дойде тук, за да ни излапа. Но когато имаме силен дух, нищо не могат да ни направят. Нищо. Дори рептилиите, техните началници, се плашат от духът ни. И за това, че българите сме все още силни с силата на духът си, аз апелирам към вас, народници, време е. Отдавна времето е дошло. Да ритнем канчето на образователната система, да ритнем канчето на тоя модел на управление, защото и тези нещастници, които са се вживяли в ранг на бокове тук, те не знаят, че са врачичките на същото тази глобална мафия. Да, уважаеми господа нещастници и управници на нашето общество, и вие сте в техните ръце. Така както съсипвате сега българският народ, така и вашите съсипат. Който нож вади от нож умира. Който копае трап други му и той пада в него. Колко още, колко още. Хилядолетия минаха. Можете да си помислите, че аз съм афектиран. Е така, просто да се правя на велик нищо подобно. Аз съм афектиран, защото ни мина времето. Защото и ние нищо няма да направим, както изглежда. Но имаме, имаме шанс. И аз заради него тук седа и заради него просто се надявам да мобилизираме колосалния дух на българщината и да излезнем да се спасим. Само тогава, само при това положение ще ни бъде помогнато свише, защото е казано пак Светото Писание. Помогни си сам, за да ти се помогне свише. Ако помните във филма Трои, Агамемно отказва на един от командващите си армиите, Боговете помагат на силните, на високо мобилизираните, на високо активните хора, а не на заспалите, на хленчещите и на умиращите. Точно тях ще ги ликвидират, както прави и глобалната мафия. Не нашите поплювковци, които като жалки и брикчи, изплезили е такива езици и им ближат отзад, да си мислят, че по този начин са велики оправници. Не, великият е този който беше като Левски. Великът е този, който беше като Христос. Ние ще станем такива като тях, ако искаме да преминем в четвърто и пето измерение. И иначе отимаме в дън вселенските бездни, безвездни, железни. Там, където им е тяхното място. На глобалният елит, на големите тарикати и на цялата тая пасмена, която доведе цялата цивилизация до тотална безисходица. Не ви се извинявам за тона. Помислете и ще видите. И вие ще изпаднете в този стрес. Защото начинът на живот, който водиме тук, не само ние, българите, е безмислен. Той е тотално обезмислен. За да имаме смисъл на живота и аз се чуда с какво живеят онези, които решават тривиални проблеми. Че аз ако започна да живея по този начин на живот, аз трябва да се разстрелям. Ен пъти по ред. Слава Богу, че се занимавам с тези въпроси. И затова съм толкова силен. И затова разбрах у нези, които преди мен са си отишли. Защо са били толкова силни? Станете вие силни, скъби приятели. Ние ще успеем. Благодаря ви за вниманието.